I had a dream uh, to build a boat, a beautiful boat or a submarine, something, and then I got hit by reality called bugs. If you're a KSP developer, don't well, please don't shoot the messenger, but uh, I found a few more things. So let me introduce to you the Kerbal Jet Ski Mark I. It's got everything we need. It's got a Weasley engine, it's got an air intake, and it's got a tank of fuel, and it's all above the waterline. We're gonna engage our engines, and all of a sudden, all of our air intake goes away. We have nothing. No air, no engine going, nothing. However, it was showing air when we started. Now, easiest thing to do for testing is we're just gonna raise the engine up because maybe it's a little too close to the water. So we are going to take a small panel and we are just going to attach one of those at the top in line with our cockpit and then we are going to smack our engine right on top of that. Hopefully this will keep us up and out of the water. If that is the problem that we are facing at this moment, it is just an assumption. Now, on first thought, I wouldn't really expect this small panel to actually make me that butt heavy, as the panel is not that heavy. But even with the engine being half in the water, it still turns on, it still functions, and we've changed nothing except for putting it on top of this panel. And then the game adds insult to injury, and it works even better upside down with the engine completely submerged. So we need to fix the balancing of this craft. So we're going to take these front pontoons and we're going to put them on panels as well, just to extend them out. And we're also going to add them to the back just to try and make this thing as stable as possible for testing. Now, other than fixing our balancing issues, we have changed nothing else with the engine. So we're going to launch our craft and we're going to try our tests all over again, hopefully with a little bit more of a stable craft. And we're going to ignite our engines and head off into the clear blue yonder. Except the engine gives out, and not only that, it immediately flips into reverse and pulls me under and upside down. Now, not only does it just flip us under, the engine also decides to miraculously change direction again. Except now this time it's going to allow us to go forwards. Now here the air is run out again, which means it should flip into reverse again, but it doesn't. It keeps going forwards. Underwater it works a lot better, and this makes zero sense. No, oh, you know, we're we're just gonna do some more changes. We're gonna see if we can figure this out. So I'm going to add in a couple more tanks. I'm going to try and make this thing a little bit more butt buoyant just to help hold that engine out of the water. It seems to be as soon as it gets close to the water, it gets confused. It's totally fine under the water. It's totally fine flying in a plane. But if it gets anywhere close to the air water interface, it gets really confused. So off and away to launch number four. We are a little bit more butt buoyant this time, which is what I was going for. So now we're gonna try this again. Definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and over, expecting different outcomes. But hey, this is what you do when you test. And so far, this test is coming out exactly the same as the last one. So as soon as it runs out of air, it immediately flips into reverse, then continues to pull me along in reverse with the engine under the water to at some moment it deciding again it is out of air and the engine then has just closed and is now flipped into forwards again although my air indicator now says that I have no air but it is not stopping and reverting into reverse it is now totally fine to continue on running like this so this bug ends up being really really random so, you know what, screw it. Um, the engines that don't like working just above the water, well, whatever, we'll just put them below the water. If they don't want to work above, we'll put them below. And back to the dock with launch number five. So theoretically, this engine just shouldn't work at all because it's an air breathing engine. It's totally underwater. It wouldn't work at the surface, but 
it's working here, I guess? You know, no air, no nothing. It hasn't flipped into reverse once. It is totally fine going forwards. In fact, it's so fine going forwards that we are increasingly increasing our pitch just due to the overwhelming amount of force that this engine can provide until eventually we flip over. Now, this is not due to the engine bug. This is just more due to we have an engine way out on an arm causing leverage and we're applying a lot of force and that's going to lift us up out of the water. Same thing would happen with a real boat. Although as soon as it gets into the air, it decides it has no air and it turns into reverse and flips us back upside right. Goes backwards a little bit. And then right about now, the engine should go into forwards again, because right now it's in reverse. Wait, no, it's not going forwards. It's continuing to go backwards. Okay, if I finally clicked into it and figured it out, now it's going to go forwards. So again, like, trying to actually design a boat around parts that just want to do stuff randomly is really, really hard. So if one is good, two is better. That's pretty much just a written rule in KSP. One is good, two is better. So we're going to go with two engines. We're going to get rid of this extra little plate that holds them down deeper in the water. We're going to bring them up just a little closer to the surface, and we're going to see how this reacts. So we'll toss this little boat into the water and we're going to see how it goes. So we're going to ignite those engines and theoretically this thing should go forwards fine because our last boat did. The only difference is these engines are right on the hull. They're not held down into the water. So we are going to go in a circle, I guess. I have no rudders on this thing nothing to be able to control its direction at least not this quickly um the only thing i have is the gyro in the cockpit which is a pretty slow way of turning but this thing pretty much just wants to sit here and go in circles and we can also see with our engine cowlings they are extended which means at the moment the engine is in reverse although no it just decided to close themselves and it's gonna go forwards again so are we going to start doing circles again, or are we actually going to start going straight? Oh, well, we're going to go straight. Again, totally random. Now, I wonder what happens if we just put the engines on the top instead of underneath. Um, one is with the engines on top, we're sinking more into the water, and that's just due to the, them with fuel being above water. But, um, yeah, we're not going much we're just kind of chugging along and then we stop and then we start and we stop and we go in a circle and then we get dragged down into the water this seems really familiar but yeah well Let's do our due diligence. Maybe our engines were a little too close to the water and that was causing it to have some problems. So back to putting them on panels and lifting them out of the water. And forward we go. And oh, they're coming into reverse. Oh no. Well, they didn't flip us over backwards. And forwards and on. Um, you know, at least it's consistently going forwards it's predictable in that nature um it's kind of like the the toot toot express but at least in this case this is coming up to kind of what i would call predictable you know it's going in a consistent direction i just know that it's going to pulse on and off and i'm not going to flip over at least i'm going for oh never mind So, uh, back to the drawing board, I guess. Um, let's try getting these engines further out of the water. Maybe make them think that they're flying like a plane. So, we're going to use this little tiny truss. It's really, really light. It's like .003. Um, so, it's lighter than these panels, and we're going to use two of them. 
and that should get our engine up out of the water far enough that it thinks it's flying like a plane. Except one, we tip over backwards pretty aggressively, but also asymmetrically, and we roll over to the side. So something's definitely wrong with our weight distribution here. We haven't really changed anything, although 0.02 tons and 2 tons. We've set our engines to have only 0.2 tons so that they're not so heavy to lower our craft down. Except we'd already set this. The only thing we did was move an engine. So let's reset it and give it a try. That's working pretty good. We're not tipping over to the side now, but we're still too heavy backwards. Even though these trusses are lighter, it seems to be weighing us down more than a panel. In the one hand, we've lessened our overall weight. On the other hand, we have lifted the engines up higher into the air. And instead of the boat caring that it got lighter, it seems to care more that the engines got higher. So imagine yourself in this boat. If you stand up, your boat sinks. Even if you stand up and throw all your weight overboard, the act of standing up makes your boat sink. Well, uh, it helps with the front to back, but we are tipping over again, so what's causing us to roll over to the side? And again, our tanks that aren't supposed to be filled with any fuel for buoyancy are now mysteriously getting fueled or filled, so I have to go and check every single tank and make sure everything is all balanced, and it just comes down to when you place things, symmetry does not care about the settings, it just builds an entirely brand new piece. Now, I'm going to say that's a pretty big problem with the symmetry, and that needs to be adjusted. However, back to our testing. Has putting our engines up higher made them better? Eh, I don't think so. One, you can't really run engines up this high, because as you see, it wants to tip you over. But we are still flipping in between forwards to backwards thrust. Now, there is this setting, Auto Switch Enable. And this totally perplexed me for a little bit, and then I figured it out. There, there's no reason that you would ever want the Weasley engine to automatically switch into reverse. That's just not a thing. That would be like having an engine with afterburners turn on automatically. However, for motors that have a air and a closed intake system that will use LOX fuel, those you do want to turn on automatically when you leave the atmosphere, if you so choose. However, due to the way programming works and classes and object orientation, the stuff that I'm not even going to go into what and why here, you set things up so that everything gets the exact same variables for every single object, and they just arbitrarily decided that if it has two modes, it gets the auto switch, but the auto switch should only be for air breathing and non-air breathing. So when you are building your crafts, do double check this setting and see if you have it and if it's turned on. For the Weasley, it shouldn't even be a thing. It shouldn't be on those objects. Um, for any of the ones that are air breathing only but have afterburner, they should not be on that one as well. I haven't double checked that one yet. Um, they should only be on for the ones that allow you to go into space. Having it on all of them arbitrarily, even when it makes absolutely zero sense, is again kind of a reason where I'll say it's kind of like it wasn't even tested, because it comes up pretty quick when you actually test it. So in our VAB, we are going to make two little changes. One is we're going to turn off this auto switching on these engines. Now, this is kind of strange, although it doesn't maintain the fuel when you place things symmetrically, it maintains the settings for the auto switch. So there's really something going on with the symmetry placement and they really need to double check that. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a extra air intake on the top just to see what happens. And we'll see how this craft goes. Again, we've turned off the auto switching, so that's no longer a problem. And we've added in extra air intake, so that should give us more air. Except we are not moving, we're not going forwards anywhere. 
the air intake on one of them says that it is intaking a little bit of air. Um, however, the ones in the front are saying that there is no air intake available and the engine just refuses to run. Here we are again in the VAB and we're going to try something a little different. So those air intakes just seem to suck. So we're just going to take them off completely and we're going to try this nice little radial one. We're just testing. We just want to see if what changes causes what to happen. So we will see if we have any better luck with this craft. Now it takes it a little bit to get going and it's going in a circle. Why? I have no idea. It appears only one engine is working. Which causes us to roll over because we are top heavy. And we are still only running that one engine, although it went through the air interface, it never shut off. And the other engine never actually turns on, although they are identical. They have the same amount of fuel, the same intakes, the same engines, the same everything. But one of them is methane air deprived. So if we're methane air deprived, we're going to put on a little tiny extra air intake. Maybe that'll help it. Who knows? And you never know until you actually test it. So let's test. And this actually seems to be doing something. Our engines aren't cutting out. Both of them are working. We're not going in circles. But we are a little bit top heavy. So any type of turning that I try and do is bound to flip me over. So let's take it for a cruise. We finally got a boat working. Yay, let's go for a cruise. Got to do something with our boat, right? You know, that's what we built it for is to go out cruising. However, you know, there's major problems with this design. Like it is so top heavy, it is not stable. Um, you accelerate too quick, you decelerate too quick, you turn too quick you hit a weird little wave your rcs has a per sas has a bad day any of those things and you're going over <laughs> just like that um so in which case um you know reset the camera you know upside down is still more stable putting those engines way deep down in the water is still more stable but it just makes no sense and it makes everything really random. So with a couple other tests that I've kind of cut out here just for time, I've, as you can see, I plastered this whole thing with air intakes and it actually kind of started helping, although I was still top heavy. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna place the engines right on top of the main hull, which in the beginning you can remember that was when our engines wouldn't even turn on at all except now we have just got a plethora of air intakes so it hopefully should have enough air and hopefully have our center of gravity a little bit more proper so that we're not so top heavy that we want to tip over in the water so let's back again at the dock and launching another boat We've got tons of air intakes, so there's no way we should run out of air. I'm sure something's going to come up, but, you know, we got to test it to see what's going to happen. So we're going to engage our engines and running them at just a little bit lower thrust because I am just curious to see if the air intake indicators will show me that they are losing air intake because that's usually when all the problems would start to happen. However, they seem stable, so we're going to go with more thrust, and we're going to see how this one here actually goes. And it pushes me under the water, and yeah, that's just not very good. So even with the engines right down on top of the hull, it still wants to push me upside down. Now, just for time's sake, I've cut out about eight or ten other tests where I've done different mixes of air intakes, I haven't changed the position of the engines, but just which air intakes, how many air intakes, just trying to see if I could find a sweet spot that would allow the engines to run consistently. 
and this here is actually the most stable and most predictable that I have actually gotten yet. Now in the end it's taken about three of these radial intakes per engine to keep them filled with air, although normally our first air intake would have worked instead of having to add multiples of them and needing these radial ones seeming to be the more stable. And that's not very stable, um, but we are going to come back to that. There's another test that we will compare that against. And, you know, after flipping over, these ones seem to be fine running underwater. So, yeah, they work in above the water. They work below the water. They just really don't like working within a certain distance of the air water interface area. So I'm not too sure of exactly what that value is, how high, how low you have to be, 100%. You know, also adding that in with this switch mode enable, um, auto switching enable that's on the Weasley, that really just needs to go because that just adds a whole lot of confusion to the entire situation. Anything other than a vacuum capable engine, if it just changes its mode, it's not going to be a very good thing that's going to be happening to you. That's either randomly turning on and off afterburners or randomly turning on and off reverse. Um, I have no idea why that's there. I know how it got there because of coding stuff. And also, there is in the VAB with the symmetry placement of objects not maintaining the proper settings for how much fuel is supposed to be in them, which throws the balance of your craft all off and makes it just another level harder trying to build a boat. Maybe if we are trying to make the air breathing engines not work under the water, providing actual water engines like a motorboat outboard engine that can turn left right basically like a thrust vectoring maybe a small medium large outboard motor um, for any of our craft and for submarines having something like a ballast tank would work really really good just something that basically has a mass range that we can set it to during play so we can in a sense simulate pumping water out and filling it with air or vice versa and it's not a fuel tank but it holds a liquid that's magical that can come and go a couple parts like this would just be really helpful now in terms of the flip over from the last test, this one I'm trying to dive under, pull out, roll left, roll right, do everything that I can to cause this to flip out and it won't. It is actually a really stable craft and completely unlike all the previous craft that we have been working with. And the only thing that I have done is just swapped it from being an air breathing engine to a rocket engine. And the downside of that is I have next to no fuel. My fuel tank only gets me out of the dock and doesn't even get me all the way back to the dock. So yeah, we need some water equipment. So we're not at the mercy of.